Mathematics with me, Nikhila Shankar. So this is our next topic, Variance and Standard Deviation. Now, what are we talking about? What were we looking at until now? We were looking at mean deviation about mean or mean deviation about median. Why are we using this kind of a method, Variance and Standard Deviation? Why are we skipping this? Because when we are finding the mean deviation with respect to median, if we have values, for example, you have 1, 2, 7, 9, 11, that is the variations and the values very very minimal. Okay? So what if your data is 10, 1000, 10,000, 1 lakh and so on. Okay, your value just keeps increasing. So what is the change in the values? What is the variation? It is very very huge. So in the many cases, you cannot find them using the mean deviation about mean or median. So we prefer using this method. We cannot completely rely on that method. In algebra, logic, it is not giving a proper answer when the variations or the changes are very very high. So we skip to variations and standard deviations. Okay, until now what did we learn? Ungrouped data, wherever you don't have the frequency, fi kadayadu. So your mean will be sigma xi divided by n. Mean deviation, this is what we call, correct? Mean deviation about mean and median. So mean deviation will be sigma xi minus x bar divided by n. xi is the different data that we have and x bar is the mean. And for grouped data, we had discrete and continuous frequency distribution. Discrete and continuous la frequency column irko, but discrete na you do not have a range of values. You will not have a class interval. But for continuous, you will have ranges, correct? 0 to 10. 10 to 20. In the mari class intervals irko, you need to find the value of xi and then use the formula. So this is the formula for mean and this is the formula for mean deviation. Fi mod of xi minus x bar divided by sigma fi. So if in that la, you see that we are taking the absolute value. The absolute value will not give you a proper value algebraically. Correct? Ha? So that's why absolute value panna ma, what else we are going to do? We are going to learn about variation and standard deviation where you are going to square the numbers. If we have a negative number, we are using the absolute value. You get a negative number. So when you do the absolute value, you will get a positive number. What is the other option to neglect the negative number? You can square it. Correct? So that is what we are going to see in variance. So variance will be the same formula. When we are looking for ungrouped data, it will be the same formula. But instead of the absolute value, you will be having a square. So what will it be? Here the variance square is sigma xi minus x bar the whole square divided by n, small n which is the number of terms. Okay, and what will be a standard deviation? Here we call it the mean deviation. Here it will be called the standard deviation which will be the square root of variance. So whatever value you get here, you are going to find the square root. Okay, so it is not going to change your value. Instead, you are not going to get any negative numbers because you are squaring it. In that will absolute value, in that will square. Okay, similarly discrete and continuous, you will again have the same formula. The mean formula does not change. You also have another formula here. X bar is a plus sigma fi di divided by sigma fi into h where h is your range. A is the assumed mean. Sigma fi is the sum of all your frequencies. Di is nothing but xi minus your assumed mean divided by h. You remember this? This is the shortcut to find the mean. So, either we will use this. Sigma square for discrete and continuous will be the same formula which will be sigma fi times instead of the absolute value you will have the square divided by sigma fi. Okay? So these are all your new formulas which we will be using to solve examples and exercise questions henceforth. So why did we switch to variance and standard deviation? Because the previous method which we were dealing with mean deviation about mean and median are not giving you the proper algebraic value so you cannot completely rely on them. So we are going to learn about this new topic and this is what we are going to follow henceforth. Okay. So moving on to example 8. You are asked to find the variance of the given data. So you have the ungrouped data. You do not have any frequency. Correct? What is the formula? X bar is sigma xi divided by n. So you add all these values and you divide by the number of observations. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you add all this divided by 10. So this is one way of finding the mean. What is the other way of finding? You are very familiar with this formula. So you have a plus sigma fi di divided by sigma fi into h. Correct? This is the shortcut to find the mean. But here you do not have any frequencies. So this is another formula that you can use. So a is the assumed mean which will be some middle value. Okay? So middle value plus di. Sigma di where di will be xi minus a divided by h into what will be your h? In that way you do not have any range. If 0 to 10 your h will be 10 minus 0 which is 10. What will be your range here? Your values differ uniformly. So in that way 6, 8, 8, 10, 10, 12. So what is 8 minus 6, 2. 10 minus 8, 2. So your range is basically 2. The values get deferred by 2. So you can opt any method to find the mean or the sum or you can 
Also simply do what you learned in your arithmetic progression. So what is your first term? A equals 6. What is your common difference? 8 minus 6 which is 2. What is your number of terms? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Your number of terms is 10. So you can easily find your SN value. SN value is n by 2 of 2a plus n minus 1 into d which will be n is 10 divided by 2 of 2 times 6 plus 9 into d which will be 2. So this is 5 times 12 plus 18. 18 plus 12 is 30. 30 into 5 is 150. So this is your summation. This is your SN. So what will be your mean x bar is SN divided by the number of terms which is 150 divided by 10 which is 15. So this is your mean. You can also use this method. Okay. I find this method to be very very easy instead of doing all the tabular columns. So simply in the mark you have to see if the data are arranged in the proper order, proper uniform way, you have to also check if your common difference is the same, okay? Don't make mistakes. So my variance, sigma square will be sigma of xi minus x bar the whole square divided by n. If xi minus x bar and I, each and every value, I have to subtract, then square them, correct? So it will be 6 minus 15, 6 minus 15 the whole square, plus 8 minus 15 the whole square, plus 10 minus 15 the whole square, plus... 12 minus 15 the whole square. So this is going to be very very long. So I'll directly write the values. So what is 6 minus 15 the whole square? You understood the pattern. So 6 minus 15 the whole square will be minus 9 the whole square plus 8 minus 15 will be minus 7 the whole square plus 10 minus 15 is minus 5 the whole square. In the minus and neglect under the we are going to square it. Okay. Then 12 minus 15 minus 3 the whole square plus 14 minus 15 is minus 1 the whole square. 16 minus 15, 1 square. 18 is 2 square. Sorry, 3 square. 20 is 5 square. You see that this is your sum of all odd numbers. Then 22 minus 15 will be 7 square. I'll write it in the next line. Plus 7 square. Plus 24 minus 15 will be 9 square. Okay. Divided by, the whole divided by the number of terms, which is 10. So you have to simply square and add the values. So 9 square and a 9 square will be 81 plus 49 plus 25 plus 9 plus 1 plus 1 plus the value gets repeated. 9 plus 25 plus 49 plus 81 the whole divided by 10. If over set of values add for we will just add the other value again. Okay. So 81 plus 49. What is 81 plus 49? I have 130. 130 plus 25 will be 155. 155 plus 9 will be 164. Okay, so 164 plus 1 is 165. So I have 165 plus either way 165. I again have the same numbers getting repeated. So 165 plus 165 divided by 10. So this will be 330. Okay, 330. So this is 330 divided by 10, which is 33. So what have I found out? I found out my variance. Sigma square and put again. Sigma equals the square root of the value that you just found out. So this is root 33, which is the standard deviation. So when you find root 33, root 33 can be given So you have 33.00 square root of the value. 33 there is two bar. So I have 5 5 are 6 6 are. So 5 5 are 25. I have 33 minus 25, which is 8.00. In there this becomes 5 2 are 10. Then I have 107 times 107. So 5.77 are 49, 4, 7 1s are 7. So when you just do it, you'll get 5.7. Okay. 5.74 is your approximate value. So this is your standard deviation. Okay. Please come.